Throughout this entire set of introductory videos, we've more or less assumed that we know what a PDF is, but it's not something that I've ever explicitly covered. This video will rectify that deficiency. Without delving too deeply into the details, we're going to take a look at the internal structure of a PDF. If you've watched all the videos and have been paying attention, then you already know a few things about PDF. The first thing, of course, is that the letters PDF stand for Portable Document Format. A PDF is a kind of electronic document format that's modeled on paper. The word portable means that it's supposed to look and behave the same no matter where and how the file is rendered. PDF was created by Adobe in 1991 and they made it an open standard so that anyone could build tools to create, manipulate, and view PDF files. And then, in 2008, PDF was converted into an ISO standard. But, since PDF was open from the beginning, it has attracted a large and diverse group of third-party developers who have helped to make it wildly popular. One of the main characteristics of a PDF file is that it is self-contained. Everything that is needed to display and use the PDF is contained in one file. This is a big part of making PDF portable, so that it is very easy to transfer, store, and archive PDF files. And finally, one of the most important reasons that PDF is so popular is that the PDF viewer, Adobe Reader, is free. Anyone can view and use PDF files at no cost. But none of this really explains how a PDF is put together. Understanding even a little bit about the PDF structure will go a long way to helping you understand why PDFs behave the way they do, and to also helping you make the most of Acrobat and PDF for your own document projects. And as you'll see, this is especially true for PDF forms. Let's start out simple and build up to the more complex details. Not that I'm ever going to get too complex. A very simplistic, high-level view of a PDF is that it is a kind of folder or binder that contains pages. You can quite literally add pages to a PDF, split pages out of a PDF, and move pages from one PDF to another. Almost exactly like you'd handle a folder or binder full of paper pages. PDFs also contain a set of data that applies to the entire document. We call this document level data. It includes things like the document security info, the document metadata, anything that is an overall document property. This is also a bit like a physical paper binder in that a binder can have a lock on it and it can have information written on the inside cover or on the outside cover. So, in our simplistic way, the paper binder analogy works quite well for an electronic PDF document. But of course, there's much more to a PDF, so let's take a closer look. At the document level, the PDF contains bookmarks, which are a navigation mechanism, much like a table of contents, security data, which controls access to the document, file attachments, which are actual files attached to the PDF, so that the PDF is acting just like a zip file. There are also scripts at the document level that are triggered for various document level events, such as when the PDF is opened or when it's printed. There are form fields, document metadata, and various resources that are used in other parts of the document, and more things that are maintained at the top level of the PDF that aren't necessarily part of the drawn content. If you were paying attention while I was listing the document level items, you might be wondering why I said that form fields are at the document level. After all, the user interacts with the form fields on the pages. So, did I just make a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. PDF form fields and form field data are maintained at the document level. Another way to say this is that the fields are global to the entire document. The fields that the user sees and interacts with on the pages are called widgets. A widget is an instance of a form field. It's not the form field itself. The widget is the local appearance and the user interface for that field on a particular page. But the field definition and the data are global to the entire document. This particular bit about the internal structure of form fields actually explains a lot about how form fields behave in the PDF and about how they are scripted. So this is a good bit to remember when we get into the more detailed how-to tutorials on forms. Let's take a closer look at the pages. The pages are the part of the PDF document that the user sees and interacts with. Most of these other things are necessary parts of the PDF, but for the most part they are hidden from the user. The pages are displayed to the user through the use of a rendering engine. Another way to say this is that the page content is drawn onto the screen. 
In order for the rendering engine to draw the page content, it needs to have some resources such as fonts, color space definitions, and images. These are all resources that are contained inside the PDF, which is what makes the PDF portable, except for fonts. Fonts do not have to be contained within the PDF. When a font is contained in the PDF, it is said to be embedded. But if a font is not embedded, Acrobat will look for the font on the user system or Acrobat will use a default font that does not require embedding. So there are situations where the PDF is not 100% self-contained. On a page, there are two types of elements, the static page content and a list of annotations. The static page content is all the normal text, graphics, and images on the page. It is what you normally think of as the main document content. This slide is a PDF page, and everything on it is part of the static page content. There are no annotations currently on this page. Inside the internal structure of the PDF, this content is specified with a vector graphic language that is unique to PDF. I'll talk more about this vector graphic language later. Annotations are a special kind of element that the user can interact with. For example, form field widgets are a type of annotation. Not the form fields, but the form field widget that the user interacts with. All of the commenting and markup tools are annotations. All of the multimedia tools shown on the Tools Interactive Objects panel are also annotations. But annotations do not have to be drawn or visible. A link is a type of annotation and a link does not have any visible appearance on the page. The user can interact with it because the link takes up space on the page, but the user can't see it. When an annotation is drawn, such as this circle annotation, it is said to have an appearance. In this case, the appearance is a red circular line. Internally, inside the structure of the PDF, the annotation's appearance is specified with the same vector graphics language as the page content. Everything that is on the page, annotation, or page content is specified with this vector graphics language. When the rendering engine goes to draw elements on the page, the page content is always drawn first. And then, each annotation is drawn in the order in which it appears in the list. All the annotations act as if they are floating above the page content, but they also overlap each other in the drawing order. So one annotation might appear above the other, but all of them appear over top of the page content. The main purpose of the annotations and why they are different from the page content is that annotations provide the PDF with dynamic and interactive features. Annotations are the only elements that are visible on a page that the user can interact with. The page content doesn't respond to keystrokes and mouse clicks, but the annotations do. For example, the circle annotation that I've drawn here is a very general purpose kind of annotation. I can select it with the cursor, and then move and resize it. We're viewing this document in Acrobat Professional, but I can perform the same operations in Adobe Reader as well. Let's take a look at another kind of annotation. The note annotation is similar to the circle, but when I place it, it automatically asks me to enter some text. Since it's a note, text is part of the nature of this annotation. I can select it and move it, but it can't be resized. Different annotations respond differently to the mouse and to the keyboard, but they all have the ability to interact with the user and they all float over the main page content. The page content is supposed to be static, just like ink on paper, and when a PDF is viewed in Adobe Reader, the page content is static. Reader simply doesn't contain any tools or have the ability to perform this kind of modification. But when the PDF is viewed in Acrobat Professional, you can actually edit the content. In general, editing page content is not a good idea. Edits should be done in the original application. But there are times that you need to do fix-ups. Earlier versions of Acrobat Professional provided touch-up tools for this purpose. But Acrobat 11 has gone a step farther and provides a set of editing tools in the content editing panel. One of the main concepts behind PDF is that the content is high fidelity. It uses specific, well-defined fonts, calibrated color spaces, and exact positioning information so that it renders and prints exactly the same everywhere. This exacting description is provided with the page content operators. These operators form the graphics language that I mentioned earlier. They are used for anything and everything that is drawn on the PDF page, whether it's static content or an annotation appearance. A vector graphic 
is a literal description of the drawn graphic. It is composed of operators that, for example, indicate where a line should begin, where it should end, the color of the line, and its thickness. This cryptic looking block of text is the actual vector graphic description for the background of this slide and for this particular separator line. It looks complicated, but there are some very simple concepts used in its construction. Let's walk through it and see how it works. The first line specifies a specific color space. The color space is one of those resources that I mentioned earlier. This particular color space is actually the background image for the slide, which is another resource. The next line defines a rectangular path that goes around the whole page. And then this lone F is a command that says to fill the rectangular path with the specified color space. And that's how the background is drawn onto this page. This next set of vector graphic instructions specify the color, weight, and location of this black horizontal line that stretches across the page. This line of code indicates a move operation to this particular coordinate. And then this is a line to instruction to this coordinate. And finally, the S instructs the rendering engine to stroke that path with the specified color and weight. This is how all graphics, text, and images within the PDF are specified. Let's review what we've just learned. Here's a breakdown of the PDF structure in a tree view. The tree is a very accurate description of how the PDF is actually structured internally. At the top of the tree are all the document level properties, including a set of pages. Each page contains the main static content, a set of resources that are used to render that content, and a list of annotations. Notice that the annotations also include resources. If an annotation is drawn, that is, if it has an appearance, then it uses the same vector graphic language as the page content and therefore requires exactly the same kind of resources as the main page content. Now let's go back up to the top level and look at the Acroform entry. You can think of this as the master list of form fields and form field data for the entire document. The field widgets displayed on the individual pages are copies off this main list. Notice also that these widgets appear in the same list as the commenting and markup annotations. To the rendering engine, which draws everything on the page, the annotations are all the same. They are just elements to be drawn on the page, whether they're a markup annotation or they're a form field. It makes no difference. The difference between the different types of annotation occurs in how they handle interactively, not in how they're drawn. And that concludes our free set of introductory videos for Acrobat 11 Forms training. You've now learned all about how electronic documents, forms, and specifically PDF and Acrobat fit into the big picture. And I imagine that you just can't wait to get into the how-to videos that explain in easy-to-understand terms the exact details you need to build robust working interactive forms. Each of these how-to videos covers specific topics from the basic getting started information, such as designing the form and using all the field tools, all the way through scripting useful features, handling data, to advanced scripting features and advanced data handling.